Hello, so I'm gonna be going over my CDA portfolio that I created. Um, I did the preschool edition, but I believe that for toddler, it is similar to the preschool one. So to start off, um, this is how my binder looks like. I decided to do like the kids' hands all around it. Um, I thought that looked really cute and that's how it looks like in the back as well. And I put CDA portfolio with my name on it. Once you open it up, you have the cover sheet, which is basically all of the things in your portfolio. Um, so for example, you have tab A and each of these tabs have like their own things that you need to talk about. And then as you complete them, you check them off so you know that you are completed with those sections. So for example, you know, tab A is still near my CDA education. Um, and then that's what you open up to. Um, and then I included this like other page. You don't have to do this. I decided just to do it because I wanted to like putting some of my CDA education. So when you get the book, um, it will go over everything that needs to go in each of these tabs. So your teacher or whoever um, will give you that book. Um, either the preschool edition or the toddler edition. So then when you open up, you have the summary of my CDA education. And these are the areas that you need to cover. And then you must complete like 120 hours, you know, um, related to these areas. And I believe it's 480 hours um, that you must complete in a childcare facility to receive your CDA. So... In this section, I decided to include my high school transcripts, college transcripts. So I took some college classes related to child development. So I included these on here. Anything that is related to child development, any courses, you should include them just because, you know, the more the better. Meet the teacher students. So since I am a high school senior, um, I decided to give this to the parents along with the family questionnaires that you'll see in a bit. Um, just so parents, you know, get to know me a little bit more, but I decided to include this into my portfolio. Any type of achievements like certificates, rewards, I included them on here like the student of the month. And then this is the certificate you will receive once you have completed all the CDA um, requirements so i did the preschool edition so this is the certificate that i received along in this section i included my letters of recommendations you do not have to it's not a requirement but i decided to have these just in case um i included i believe three of these but these are not part of the you know requirements tab b is a family questionnaires these are questionnaires that you pass out to the parents um, with the age group that you work with. And this is the summary sheet, basically reflecting on what the parents gave you, their feedback. Um, so it asks you how many questionnaires you distributed, how many you got back from the parents. And then these are like your reflections on the feedback you received here. The CDA verification visit reflective dialogue worksheet is a worksheet that you will do the day of your observation. You will go over it with your PD specialist and she will sign off, she or he will sign off on it. And then these are the family questionnaires. And now moving on to tab C, it is the reflective competency statements and the resource collection items. So as you can see, this is kind of like the topic, um, the overall topic of what you're gonna talk about in these reflections. So to establish and maintain a safe, healthy, and learning environment. Now these are the reflections that um, I did. So like I said, in the booklet you, you receive, um, you will have like the statements or the questions that you need to talk about in each of these um, reflections. So it'll be different for everyone. These are the resource collection items. So RC1 is CPR. So the ones that you see, the RC and the number, are the ones that are required in the portfolio. 
for example, these that do not have like a number are ones that I included. So for example, food handlers card was not a requirement, but I decided to add it. RC2 is a requirement, which is why there's a number to it. And I would recommend to have the food menu of the day you're getting observed. So for example, I got observed April 26. I had the menu for that week. And you are supposed to have a month's worth of menus. Meal patterns, I decided to include this as well. The weekly lesson plan, like I said, I would recommend to have the weekly lesson plan for the day or the week you're getting observed. And then this is a monthly lesson plan that we have at the childcare that I work at. So this isn't for everyone, but I decided to include this as well, along with the daily schedule. Now moving on to tab D, we're going to talk about advancing physical and intellectual competence. So these are the statements. And now the resource collection items are lesson plans that I taught with the kids. So this is the lesson plan. And uh, next to it, um, I decided to do kind of like this little collage. Um, you don't have to do it. I did this because I wanted to. So I did like this little collage, including pictures of the kids doing the activity and me doing the activity with them. So I put the name of the activity and the area of development it focuses on. So I did that for language and literacy. And so basically these are all um, the lesson plans that I did and each of these focus on different areas of development. So for all of them, I did a photo collage. I thought that'd be really cute. So now moving on to tab E, we are going to talk about how to support social and emotion, emotional development and to pro provide positive guidance again the reflections now going on to the resource items for this tab we have to pick 10 books um and it is recommended to you know get books that you know focus on certain messages for example this one's about coronavirus pandemic so this book is about that this one's about military parents, gender identity, and just, you know, topics that, you know, teach something. And obviously there's a lot of fun books, but these touch certain, um, certain topics, loss and grief. Now moving on to tab F, we are going to talk about how to establish a positive and productive relationship with families. So again, these tabs t um, talk about that. The resource items, these are um, places that you can guide parents to in your area. And for this one is, you know, like family therapy, um, translation services um, for, you know, special um, needs. So all of these, as you can see, are labeled child and family resources um, beyond RC4. These are websites um, to share with parents and articles, so first five years. And extra helpful resources for families and childcare providers is something that I added onto my portfolio. This isn't a requirement. So these are extra like phone numbers in my area since I'm from Arizona. These are all phone numbers parents can call um, if they need any type of services located specifically in Arizona. Tab G is to ensure a well-run purposeful program that is responsive to participant needs. So again, the reflections, the resource items. These are the accident report form. So these are the ones that you get from the childcare you, um, you currently work at or volunteer. So this is specifically for the childcare that I work at the incident report, the emergency form, 
an observation form. So um, I'm not really sure if you're supposed to complete one. I decided to have like an example of one and then just leave it empty. So the observer kind of, you know, gets to see like, okay, this is how you fill it out and this is how it looks like. Medicine form. I also included this into my binder. Um, at the childcare that I work at, we do not work with medicine. However, if there was a case of like a medicine, these are the um, papers we would use. Metrotech Childcare Progress Report. This is the, the, the progress report we use at, at the childcare I'm at. So this is what we do. Again, this isn't required. I just included it. So these are all just um, sheets that relate to the childcare that I'm at. Now moving on to tab H, um, we talk about how to maintain a commitment to professionalism, the reflections. The research collection items are services in Arizona or the place that you live in. So again, these are Arizona, early childhood education. And then these are other um, places like NACI where parents can, you know, look for more information. This is like out of state, worldwide. So this is an international and any type of resource for parents. These are more phone numbers. child abuse so all of these rcv13 um each of these um in your book you'll be able to see like exactly what goes in in this rcvi3 now the last one is tap i which is professional philosophy statement and what's pretty cool about this one is one of um the children decided to do this art for me and so I thought what a good way to you know put it there and include their art into my portfolio so this is just my personal philosophy statement back here this last page I decided to you know just put this for my PD specialist in case they're um you know Wondering about when I'm going to take the exam and all that. So I decided to include that, the date and the time. Back here, I just have pictures of me with the kids, which I will not show. Um, but yes, basically, this is my portfolio. I am a high school senior student. So I hope that I can help out any high school seniors or just anyone um, who's interested in receiving their CDA. It is a process, but it's totally worth it. Um, as for the test, I believe it was only 60 questions and it's 120 minutes long. So I hope you found this video helpful and that you can get inspired by my portfolio. I will say that um, I really enjoyed creating this portfolio. And um, yeah, thank you.